Hello everyone, welcome to Self-Hosted Kubernetes with BPF Episode 1. My name is Michael Mullen. Now this is a zero-indexed series, meaning that this episode is part two of a five-part series. This episode is going to be a short one because what we're going to be doing today is compiling up a Linux kernel that will be used by our Firecracker VMM that supports both Kubernetes and BPF type format. So let's get right into it. The first thing that we want to do is we want to grab from my uh, Kuber Ansible GitHub repository this uh, Firecracker config file. So the way you do that is find the file, click on it, click raw, and then copy that and w get it onto your uh, hard drive. Now the next thing that we want to do is go into kernel.org and find ourselves a kernel that we want to be using for this project. Now all the kernels above 5.4 will work for what we're doing here, um, but let's be adventurous and pick the most recent mainline kernel. So the way you do that is you go into the view diff, go into summary, and at the bottom of the page, you'll find these links here that you can clone. So just copy that and then git clone and paste from your clipboard. And we're actually going to call this mainline. Okay, now that we've got the source, let's go into this mainline directory. And there is uh, one specific bug I've been having on this mainline uh, source repository that I haven't had on older kernels, older stable kernels. And that issue is that here in the file vertio underscore dot net, we seem to fall upon this bug every once in a while when we set up our Kubernetes cluster. So what we want to do is in drivers net vert io underscore net. So ca drivers net vert io dot net. Let's find that bug on, and it it it's after the line caller should know better. Now, I'm not sure why this bug happens. I'm not sure if it's a, a firecracker problem or if it's a kernel problem, but whatever it is, it crashes our machines while we are installing Kubernetes. So instead of running this bug, let's do an if what they do Return false. All right. And actually, I think we might want to return. No, it takes a bool, so we can return a bool. Okay. So the next thing that we want to do is close this out after saving and copy in that kernel configuration that we um, that we downloaded from my GitHub repository. And we want to copy that into the file .config. Then we will run make menu config. And if there's anything that you want to change in here, go ahead and do that. Sometimes you might want to uh, We might want to make sure that BPF is enabled as a, um, an LSM and we might want to find the, um, um, the BPF LSM um, flag here to turn it on and that's in general setup. So we go up to general setup and then look for 
the BPF LSM. And turn that on as well. This isn't necessary for um, for the series. It's just a, a nice thing to do if you want to play around with BPF LSMs. So we'll exit out of this. And then we will make J18. Or what I do is 1.5 times the number of um, threads that I have. And they, you can get the amount of threads that you have on your machine by typing NPROC. So I've got 12 threads and I like to do 1.5 times that during my make. And we also want to do this make tar GZ package. And then we want to rename the, um, the tar GZ that comes out of it, which will be Linux dash whatever version you're compiling. And we want to rename that to kernel.tar.gz uh, for ease of use in our future scripts. So let's run that. All right, we're all compiled up. And you can see that now we have this kernel.tar.gz um, file. And we also have a VM Linux file. So that's uh, all that we need to, to run Firecracker. There is one last thing that I like to do in order to my, make my scripts a little bit happier, and that is do a soft link from mainline to Linux. So yeah, a uh, pretty short video, but um, this is what we need to do in order to get ourselves a kernel worthy of running um, Firecracker. Um, and in those Firecracker machines, it'll be able to support uh, both uh, all the, the Kubernetes stuff that we need to do here, and it will support um, BPF type formats. So I'll see you in the next episode.